Welcome to Hamish and Dave's Adelaide Adventure. I'm Hamish Cargill. And I'm Dave Cameron. Now, Dave-o, our time in the USA is well and truly over, but you'd have to say our best days are still to come. Hey, mate, I don't know about you, mate, but I was getting a bit bored at home. I needed another adventure. Guess that's how we find ourselves in Adelaide at the Australian International three-day event. Well, here we are, Hambo, on dressage day, and it's raining. Before we could sit down and watch a day of dressage, we decided to get a little more familiar with the city of Adelaide. And this meant hitting the road in our trusty <laughs> little hire car. Adelaide is the capital of South Australia and Australia's fifth biggest city. Wedged between the desert and the sea, it's home to about 1.3 million people. Although where they all were on this Friday morning is a bit of a mystery. Adelaide is known as a city of churches. And while the churches are magnificent, on this rainy morning we weren't feeling particularly religious. Fortunately, Adelaide is also famous for its cafe culture. And while the Lord hadn't spoken to us, our stomachs had. While there are many things that Hamish and I do together, sometimes a man just needs some time to himself. Adelaide has no shortage of excellent places to stay, but even though this adventure was on a tight budget, we still managed to scrape together enough to give this place a miss. Well, Dave, we know that Adelaide is the city of churches, the city of racetracks. What else is Adelaide famous for? Hey, mate, we've seen a lot of churches, I must say, uh, but Rundle Street, that's what I think of when I think of Adelaide. And it's a nice place, plenty of cafes, it's that uh, big country town. Mate, sort of like Canberra, but better. <laughs> The shopping on Rundle Street is some of the best in the country, with the designer stores ensuring there's always something to catch the eye. Vintage store on Rundle Street. Buy yourself a red coat, I think. While I was tempted by this red coat, my mind was in other places. So it was time to get back outside to talk to the people of Adelaide about the three-day event occurring at the end of the street. In Kentucky, it seemed that everything we touched turned to gold. But back home in Australia, Dave was like Harry Potter without his wand, and it seemed that his magic touch had deserted him. With Dave suffering a crisis of confidence, it was time to head back to the safety of the hire car. Adelaide has had a long association with motorsports, and like the three-day event, the Clipsal 500 runs right through the city centre. With the traffic stopped and the track begging for action, we couldn't help having a burn. While I've always suspected that Hamish is a stick, the Yaris didn't seem to share our same affection for racing. Amongst all the excitement of being in Adelaide, it was almost easy to forget that we were there for a horse event. After a hard morning out in the streets, it was nice to be back among friends. At this event, our responsibilities were great, and reporting was only a small part of our role. This is Hambo, grooming. This is Dave top hat minding. And this is Dave patting my girlfriend on the leg. <laughs> like swimming with sharks or wrestling crocodiles, helping your partner ride is one of the world's most dangerous activities. And I couldn't help but think that Hamish was walking into a minefield. Mind you, on this particular morning, there seemed to be no shortage of partners willing to sacrifice themselves along with him. Even without relationship dramas to contend with, the atmosphere on dressage day at the Adelaide event is notoriously tense. And unfortunately, this means that things don't always go to plan. Over in the judges' boxes, things weren't necessarily that much more relaxed. When you mix a Brit, a Frenchman and a Finn with a gloomy Adelaide day, someone is going to feel the pain. And as four-star writer Emma Mason said... Yeah, I think the judges were maybe a bit unenthusiastic for most of the day. Emma's cracking test on F1 Farinelli might have been far better than the score, but it was still enough for her to maintain pole position for most of the day. And she had to wait until the last rider for her old coach, Heath Ryan, on Mystery Whisper to snatch the first day lead away from her. After a horror 2009, things have been looking good for Australian eventing icon Heath Ryan in 2010. A winner at the Sydney International three-day event in August, he was also crowned Australian dressage champion just two weeks before this event. With a mouth as big as a horse's, he's a reporter's dream, and we managed to catch up with him after his phenomenal performance. Well, I 
I'm glad I, I didn't look at the scores because it doesn't matter how much they give me, I'm never happy. You know, that's just sort of one Can of I those stop you things. Then? You look at the scores when you're going <laughs> no, around? No, I never do. Do you? Do? I never do. But I'm, I should because I've often thought, you know, it would be um, quite groundbreaking uh, moment in, in Australian dressage if you gave the judges the bird, up, bird if they'd given you a low score. <laughs> Two years ago, like he, he was a baby horse at this level, uh, Mr. Whisper. But he, he's he's real. Um, he's a he's a genius, but he's a lunatic as well in in a sense. And he just jumped out and eliminated me. So I came back last year to make amends, and I got eliminated in the cross country. Yeah. So you know, I've been practicing and practicing and practicing my that, show jumping. Yeah. And, and say, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, and I tell you, if I get eliminated in the show jumping this year, I mean, I'll see the funny side in a, in a few hours. But I really need people to give me a bit of space because I won't <laughs> see the funny side at the time. With the dressage over, eventing finally got to the good bits. So we went off for a poke around the cross country course. And it didn't take long for us to run into one of our favourite riders. But we're standing in front of the water jump. Now, we've got the ducks here. The ducks were a big part of Adelaide last year. Mm -hmm. What's your plan? Um, this is probably a fence that I'm going to be giving a lot of careful thought to in the next 24 hours or so. Um, because I had a bit of a nasty stop at the water at my last event. So... For me, this water isn't ideal because the distances are quite short. I would like to be able to come in and really feel like I can sort of, you know, like really get him going. With uh, the big duck head on the side, will that put off Farinelli at all? Oh, I hope not. I hadn't really thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Tapner might have won badminton this year, but as he was stealing our limelight, we decided to go elsewhere. We're here with Nat Blundell at the corner of Rundle Street, famous Adelaide icon. Um, we're here at the Channel 7 fence, which is a famous Adelaide three-day event icon. Um, Nat, you've got a few options here. What are you going to take? The Channel 7 fence, which Channel 7, obviously a competitor of H&D TV, so not our favourite. Are you going to take the other option? Uh, basically, um, for me, it's not much of an option because you can go faster so, and you don't have to slow down so much for that corner whereas if you went the other way you'd have to slow right down balance and it's a big ugly red fence. If you want a course analysed Chris Burton is the man for the job so we're happy to let him do the talking. Fresh off uh, the water crushing games in Kentucky it was a great experience mate uh, how, do you, how do you compare this course to Kentucky? Yeah, well, it was a bit similar. You walked it and you knew the obvious lines. There was nothing where you stood and scratched your head for too long. You knew the obvious lines, and, and, um, and some riders did eat it, and, and they won, and, and, and some riders struggled because that's the dynamics of riding a horse over solid jumps. Now, Berto, I like the fact to hear that you're uh, sitting on a push bike. Now, I think of Adelaide and push bikes. Everyone brings their bike to Adelaide because it's a long way to get around. Everyone doesn't want to miss any of the action, so they've got a good bike to sit on. Um, this bike, have you had it for a few years? <laughs> this, I had to buy a new bike after I won Adelaide. I ended up at the pub and left my bike outside the pub and it got stolen. So this is a brand new bike that I'm quite proud of. Are uh, Mongoose going to get on board and be a sponsor? or? <laughs> well, if you're out there, Mongoose, we're all open for it. <laughs> With the day drawing to a close, we stumbled across the set of steps that had created a lot of discussion during the week. And even though we were weary, for some reason, we didn't find them all that hard. I'm Hamish Cargill. And I'm Dave Cameron. See you back here on Cross Country Day. Have you heard about Hamish and Dave TV before? I have to say no, sir. No, <laughs> sorry. Yeah.